Hey everybody, so this is the first installment of Personal Professional Development, the 10 minute series. Um, these are going to be short 10 minute videos that are focused on some aspect of professional development, personal development, things that we need to be taking care of during these um, crisis times that we're in. So today is managing anxiety and depression for patients and providers during crises. And these are going to be brought to you in a series of things that the behavioral health team will be providing. So some things that you may see within your patients, some things you may experience on your own, um, maybe some increases or some feelings of depression and or anxiety. This is a, just a simple way to view some of the symptoms, some of the things that you may feel or you may see. So you have a level of fatigue, so you may start to feel a little bit more tired. That could be due to the things that you're having to work on, your racing thoughts, making decisions of who's getting care, who doesn't get the care right now that, that maybe they still need but doesn't meet um, sort of the crisis scenario that we're in. Some fear and some worry about you know, yourself and your loved ones um, and some of your patients and some of the experiences that they're going through. Some changes in sleeping patterns or difficulty sleeping. This can be sleeping late. Um, it can be binge watching TV in the middle of the night or throughout the night. Just some things that kind of throw you off kilter with your sleep. It makes you more irritable and more restless. You may experience more aches and pains, these overwhelming sense of feelings of guilt, especially, you know, as we are having difficulty triaging who we're seeing and what we're seeing them for versus the people that maybe aren't being seen, as well as difficulty concentrating and increased use of stimulants and or alcohol as a coping mechanism, which we know can backfire. So there's some interventions that you can utilize for your patients, some self-support strategies that you can utilize for your patients and or yourselves. One, you know, have some conversations about the facts of the current crisis scenario and some of the, uh, the facts due to this pandemic so that it takes away some of the not accurate information that others are getting through media outlets, etc. Um, take breaks from the media in general, from Facebook, from social media, from the news, etc. because it gets to be overwhelming. And when it gets to be overwhelming, we have a really tough time with developing anxiety and feeling some of those things we talked about on a previous slide. Engage in some relaxation and some mindfulness um, strategies and techniques. Find some things that you like to do, like exercising, cooking, baking, engaging in some of those family-oriented activities and some of those things that you really like to do as hobbies. Um, again, avoid and decrease alcohol and caffeine use as, as well as um, junk food intake. Do your best to connect with others. This can be still getting outside and abiding by social distancing rules, but getting outside, getting some sunshine, going on a walk in your neighborhood, going on a hike, um, talking to people via Facebook, via FaceTime, via um, Zoom, some of those, those other modes of, of sharing that we can engage in now due to technology. Um, get a routine and develop a structure. You know, we talk a lot right now about the new normal and everything every day provides us some type of new normal. It's in, it's in a constant changing environment. Within that, all of our structures and routines that we have that have provided some type of normalcy have probably been disrupted. Now it's time to develop new structures and new routines that can benefit us and our family and, and seem to be much more important than we ever really give credit for. And also, you know, back to the hobby scene and taking some breaks and finding things that you enjoy. There's online courses, webinars, trainings that are all free right now um, that you can log into and start to take some courses and do some things that, that you have a passion for. So we know sleep strategies or, or sleep is a, an issue right now, not only for our patients, but for some of us as well. So here's some brief sleep strategies that you can engage in. And if you think about these and present these to our patients as identifying sleep thieves and then identifying sleep allies, it can separate those two things into manageable scenarios. So for sleep thieves, we want to be able to track current sleep routines to identify what the thieves are. That can include tracking stimulant use, um, the use of bright screens, what the stressful events of the day and the evening have been, how much exercise or activity have I actually engaged in, did I take any naps? On the other side, some of these sleep allies or things that help you get to sleep are going to be like staying busy and doing things that you enjoy, eating better, eating well, having a healthy diet. I know that can be a challenge right now, but it's also something that we can attain. Having a bedroom, bedtime routine. We talked just a few minutes ago about having some normalized structure and some new structure with the new normals of our lives. Sleeping when we're sleepy, reading a book, um, going to another room and reading when we wake up so that we can become sleepy again. Using your bed for sleep 
related purposes, not for binge watching TV, for doing homework, for things along those lines, and some relaxation and some breathing techniques. Here's a great breathing technique. It's super simple and it's extra and, and it's very effective. It's the 478 technique. So basically what this can do is help you get to sleep or it can calm you down enough when you feel stressed to maybe move toward getting to sleep. Basically what it does is it tricks your body into being more relaxed because it's slowing down your breathing. Also it can change your mindset, slow down racing thoughts, help you concentrate, etc. Here's how this is going to go. You're going to take a deep breath in and then you're going to exhale deeply through your mouth. Then you're going to take a deep breath through your nose for, for about four seconds or a count of four. You're going to hold that breath for a count of seven. Then you're going to exhale through your mouth for about eight seconds or a count of eight. You want to do that slowly as you're counting. And then you're going to repeat that four to eight times. And what that's going to do is it's going to help your mind to, write, uh, to relax and it's going to help your body to feel a little bit more calm and a little bit less stressed. This can be utilized really quickly with patients and you can utilize it um, on a daily basis, multiple times a day. It's a super simple technique that can help you calm down. All right, so for providers and staff, you need to start taking into account, is this burnout, is it secondary trauma stress, or is it compassion fatigue? In fact, it might be a combination of some things. We're gonna focus really quickly on secondary trauma stress. Um, basically, because of the crisis situation, because of the medical decisions that you're having to make about dealing with some patients, treating some patients, not being able to treat other patients, not being able to treat them maybe the way that you would like to, making difficult and important medical decisions, you know, hearing the experience that they have, hearing their fears and how it's affecting their health and chronic diseases, etc., can bring about the secondary trauma stress, okay? So there are psychological and emotional symptoms of it, like becoming irritable, being sad, developing depression, having mood swings, things along those lines. Um, repeated exposure to trauma, so repeatedly seeing people that are fearful of this outbreak and, and dealing with not only your personal fears, but also having to take theirs on. So some physical symptoms, like a change in appetite or fatigue, which we talked about earlier, some cognitive things like difficulty concentrating, trouble remembering things, having difficulty making decisions, um, some behavioral stuff like activity change um, or rates of activity, inability to rest, social withdrawal, um, increased use of alcohol, tobacco products, other things, caffeine, etc. Okay, so just pay attention to a lot of those things. That secondary trauma stress is really a matter of what secondary trauma stress is really. It's it's the amount of increased stress that you're under from, from working with patients as well as dealing with the, the things that you have going on in your own personal lives with yourself and your family, okay? What's your menu of personal self-care? We talked about briefly some of those strategies. Start to employ some of those things. How are you going to take care of yourself in this time of crisis, especially given that you probably aren't paying as much attention to yourself as you are your patients? Disconnect, take a break from media, don't watch violent TV shows, don't watch shows about pandemics, um, about viruses, etc. Give yourself a little break from that and watch something else. Ask for help, talk to your supervisors, talk to your faculty members, talk to the behavioral health team, and let us help you figure out where, what help you need and where that can happen. Um, use a buddy system, check in on each other. Um, Use each other as sounding boards. Try to maintain some type of a normal routine at home. Again, that's going to be this new normal. Here's some ways to cope with this secondary trauma. You reach out to others. Do some journaling about it. Do some music or art therapy. Get engaged in exercise. Do some affirmations, daily affirmations, daily meditation. Do some prayer. Um, you know, hug your animal. Pet your animals if you have pets. Humor. Crying. Positive imagery. Take a break from media. We've talked about that. Eat well, stay really hydrated. We know that your body and your brain need those things. There's a lot of apps out there that can also help. For instance, Stop, Breathe, and Think. There's an adult version and a kid's version. Calm, Ambi Pro, Headspace, Breathe to Relax, Colorfly, which is the Flamingo, Smiling Mind, Budify. All these focus on stress level, decreasing stress level. They focus on how you're feeling physically. They focus on training you in relaxation techniques and strategies, mindfulness scenarios, coloring and art therapy, meditation sessions, lots of really good apps that you can download on your phones or have your patients utilize that can help decrease some of these levels of anxiety, some of these high stress engagement things that we're dealing with. Some of these apps are going to be free. Some of them are going to have 
um, paid services. Some of them are going to have things that you can pay if you want them. And one of the most important things that I think we can do right now, as difficult as it is, is smile and have some type of sense of humor. Um, we're all in a difficult situation right now. We're in unprecedented waters where we're dealing with something that we don't necessarily know how to, to quite handle. Have a little fun um, with, the, with the humor side of things. There's plenty of memes and things out there that we can find. Um, tell some jokes to each other. Laugh at something if you can. So I hope you found these things to be helpful. Again, this is just a short snippet of some things that the behavioral health team will be providing and putting together for you um, to hopefully help all of us um, continue to manage this crisis situation in a way that keeps us healthy and keeps our patients healthy.